Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. Trials are typically designed to evaluate pre-specified outcomes in the patient population. That means insight is limited to the data collected within the boundaries of the protocol. Uh, but linked data sets can really extend researchers' insight into outcomes beyond the trial protocol via passive data collection, and that can illuminate different treatment outcomes and benefits that weren't initially included in the trial that may otherwise remain undetected. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, is your protocol capturing the entire patient journey? Clinical trials remain the cornerstone of medical evidence generation, but what happens when the trial ends? Traditional study designs provide high quality data in controlled settings, yet they often miss critical information about long-term outcomes, treatment durability, and real-world effectiveness. In this X Talk Spotlight edition, I sat down with Jimmy Poluazic, Strategic Development Director at MediData, to discuss how patient-level trial data can be seamlessly connected with real-world data. This innovation creates an enriched view of the patient's healthcare journey, including activity from before, during, and long after a study to illuminate disease progression, healthcare resource use, and unexpected treatment responses. Jimmy also explained how this approach helps sponsors generate deeper insights, reduce trial burden, and support regulatory and payer strategies, all while preserving privacy. Thank you for taking the time for this spotlight interview, Jimmy. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to the discussion. It's a really exciting space that's evolving quickly. So looking forward to chatting about it. So to start us off, why do you think traditional clinical trials often fall short in capturing the whole patient journey? And how can this limitation be addressed? We all know that clinical trials have long been the standard for gauging the safety and efficacy of a therapy but they really only represent a snapshot of a limited time frame during a trial participant's life. And because trials are defined by highly specific protocols, stringent eligibility criteria, and predefined endpoints, that snapshot is taken under rigid and controlled conditions. But an individual's healthcare journey, when looked at more holistically, is composed of a variety of diverse data streams that are generated as they interact with the routine care system. And this real-world data that's generated is ubiquitous. It can be the medical history and diagnosis information that's found in electronic uh, health records and the prescription fill information found in pharmacy claims, all the way to newer data sources, such as those generated from wearable technology. This data is often fragmented and scattered across various systems, and that results in significant interoperability challenges. But when linked together, these data types can provide really valuable insight into the patient's longitudinal healthcare journey, so before, during, and after their participation in the clinical trial. The concept of linking clinical trials to rural data is not new. Uh, tokenization has become a little bit of a buzzword recently, and the concept of privacy preserving record linkage has been explored for decades via identified workflows with data sets such as Medicare. But the number of studies in which real world evidence has been leveraged to uh, passively generate data has increased drastically over the past decade, especially since the COVID-19 pandemic. We've seen an explosion of commercial pharmaceutical organizations, as well as medical device and diagnostic sponsors, really leveraging record linkage to supplement their clinical programs with real world data. Now, Jimmy, what types of insights can sponsors gain from linking real-world data to clinical trial data that wouldn't otherwise be possible? It really comes down to that comprehensive longitudinal view of the uh, participant's total healthcare journey, again, before, during, and after their participation in the trial. So, for example, a researcher could leverage linked data from before the trial in order to gain a deeper understanding of a participant's historical diagnoses. And that could let them identify comorbidities that weren't initially screened for that could explain outcome differences in different patient subgroups. Uh, during the trial, linked claims data could be used to view hospitalizations that may impact outcomes. And then after the trial, one could analyze disease progression, whether trial patients are changing treatments, uh, and more. There was actually recently a scoping review authored by several of my Medidata colleagues 
that looked at over 70 trials that linked clinical trial data to real world data, all with varying applications. Um, it's called the linkage of clinical trial data to routinely collected data sources, and that could be found on the JAMA network. So I would definitely suggest anyone look that up if they want to see just how many applications there are. Um, but there are three prominent ones that we commonly discuss with sponsors who are really exploring doing this. I'd say the first is the ability to track long-term safety and effectiveness outcomes. So insight into the uh, clinical cohort is really limited once the trial concludes, and then keeping up with those patients long-term can be burdensome and expensive. But by tapping into routinely collected real-world data, sponsors can really gain deeper insight into long-term outcomes while also reducing follow-up burden. Another application is the ability to quantify healthcare resource utilization. So these variables are really crucial um, and they're needed to support payer and provider discussions, but they're rarely captured in clinical trials. And that often means sponsors have to wait uh, years for rural data to accumulate after commercialization. But these linked clinical trial to rural data sets can really enable researchers to immediately investigate the utilization and the cost data that appears in rural data from participants of the trial. And what that can do is bring greater insight into the true costs and burdens that are associated with inpatient and outpatient activities, as well as prescribing patterns that occur before, during, and after the trial. And then the third use case I'd highlight is the ability to generate additional evidence for label expansions. Um, so again, trials are typically designed to evaluate pre-specified outcomes in the patient population. That means insight is limited to the data collected within the boundaries of the protocol. Uh, but linked data sets can really extend researchers' insight into outcomes beyond the trial protocol via passive data collection, and that can illuminate different treatment outcomes and benefits that weren't initially included in the trial that may otherwise remain undetected. So I think in summary, uh, insights from linked data, they're almost limitless in application, but those are three key ones that we typically highlight to sponsors. Now, you mentioned follow-up burden. Could you share how common challenges, such as patients being lost to follow-up, could be mitigated? That's a great question. Uh, losing participants in the follow-up process obviously can have significant um, uh, downstream evidence burden on the trial itself. Um, that can cause sponsors to extend recruitment efforts, and then too many lost patients can also be a significant detriment to the trial itself. Uh, linking clinical trial with rural data can really allow researchers to continue deriving key clinical endpoints for consenting linked patients even if they are lost to follow up by monitoring their activity through real world data. And what that can do is provide insight into overall survival, progression free survival, changes to treatment pathways. It can also help researchers understand why that participant dropped out of the trial in the first place. And that can be really useful in optimizing study design and also preparing for regulatory conversations. So all of this can be done through the monitoring of that rural data that's generated as that participant moves through the routine care system, all without having them come back in for follow-up appointments. So I think the reduction in burden is really important there. And Jimmy, researchers have had a tough time scaling their data linkage initiatives. Could you explain how a metadata link helps with this? For instance, what makes its integration into existing workflows unique or efficient for sponsors? MediData Link offers a centralized approach for sponsors to complete really the foundational steps that are needed to link trial data with real world data. Our core design principle with Link was flexibility because the benefits of trial linkage are really applicable across therapeutic areas. It was really critical to ensure that the solution was able to fit seamlessly into trials of different uh, designs. And that's been hugely beneficial for sponsors, particularly those that are looking to scale their linkage initiatives across their portfolios and make rollout as efficient as possible. So the workflow really begins with the collection and management of the consent and all the personal information that's needed to link trial participants. We integrate directly into existing clinical workflows. So that really eases the data entry burden that would typically be placed on site users. And that enhances operational uptake and also makes it really easy to manage the data linkage consent of trial participants, as well as the entry and the modification of all the personal information that's needed to uh, link. The platform is also accessed via single sign-on, the same way site users are logging into their ECRF if they're using RAVE. And the UI is really straightforward and familiar to what they're already working with. Consent is also a really big piece of doing uh, 
trial linkage scalably and consent can be captured directly in the ECRF and then inherited into the link platform. So then the site user is able to enter, enter in all of the necessary uh, PII that's needed to create tokens directly within the link application. And then that consent status can also be modified during the trial and after just to make sure that those data sets are remaining updated and compliant. So that really minimizes the impact of using link on the trial itself and really helps the data entry process feel like business as usual. Um, another piece that I'd highlight and how we embody that flexibility is through the facilitation of two different types of trial linkage. So the first is tokenization. That's where that consenting participants' personal information, so first name, last name, date of birth, et cetera, are all run through a de-identification engine. And what results is a token, which is just a hashed encrypted ID that can't be reversed to reveal the underlying participant's identity, but it can be used to join to an array of different rural data sources. Metadata doesn't have a proprietary token, but we do have partnerships with all of the leading token vendors, and that really helps us maximize the amount of real-world data that our sponsors can work with. And then that second type of linkage we can facilitate is identified. And that's basically where a participant consents to have their personal identifiers sent to a covered entity. And what this does is enable analyses with data sets not present in de-identified ecosystems, so Medicare, for example. But in summary, Link really enables flexible data management integrated directly into clinical workflows to help sponsors uh, maximize the amount of rural data they can connect their clinical trials to. And looking at the bigger picture, how do you see data linkage evolving in the next few years? And what does it mean for regulators, payers, and patients? I think I'd go back to how we started the conversation. Um, at its core, trial linkage is really enabling sponsors to leverage data that's already being generated through routine real-world care in the clinical research process. And as treatments become more complex and more personalized, I think it's really essential that we break down these data silos and ensure that everything that a patient is generating is being taken into account, especially when we're gauging the safety and effectiveness of a therapy. The regulatory landscape in terms of how real world evidence can be leveraged is rapidly evolving. So I'd expect the number of trials that are leveraging these types of linked analyses to grow exponentially over the next few years, particularly as platforms like Link can help sponsors manage this data easier and basically make it feel like business as usual for those sponsors. So they're not uprooting what they're already doing. Another way I'd see this evolving is in the global linkage landscape. So right now, tokenization and linkage in the U.S. is relatively turnkey just due to the amenability of privacy laws and the availability of rural data ecosystems. When you look outside of the U.S., things get a bit more complicated. Data privacy laws vary by country. And this really affects how consent language needs to be structured, how long data can be stored for, and what kinds of analyses that it can power. Rural data also really varies by country, although there's significant historical precedent for doing some of those identified linkage analyses that I mentioned earlier. And that's especially due to the prominence of single payer systems throughout the globe. And again, I'd recommend that scoping review that uh, my colleagues at Medidata published on the JAMA network that I mentioned previously. It goes through um, historical examples by country and different use case, and it's really illuminating what can be done there. But overall, I think the sky's the limit with trial linkage, and I believe it will become more integrated into routine clinical research just as time goes on. Well, thank you very much, Jimmy, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Yeah, thank you again for having me. And I'd encourage anyone who's interested in the subject to feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to chat about it. Thanks again. We look forward to learning more about metadata's work in connecting clinical trial data with real-world data to create a more complete view of the patient journey. Thank you all for joining us for this X-Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion. <laughs>